factoring is one of those techniques from algebra that are, is really useful because it's something that will allow us to take a complicated problem and reduce it to a simpler problem that we already know how to solve. So we're going to start out with this video just talking about the simpler kind of factoring, which is when you pull out the greatest common factor from a polynomial expression. First of all, factoring is really just the reverse of distribution. So remember, distribution is something like this, where you've got a product and you want to simplify it. You want to get rid of the parentheses. So you distribute the multiplication. 3 times 5x is 15x, and 3 times 2 is 6. So that is what we get after we perform distribution. And factoring is just the reverse process of distribution. So if I started with 15 minus 6x, and I want to know how can I write it in the factored form of two expressions multiplied together, I want to figure out what the quantity would be that I could pull out front, like in the previous setup. An easy way to think about that at first is to express each of the monomials in terms of a product of prime numbers and their variables. So for example, 15 is 3 times 5. And I have 15x, so that's 3 times 5 times x. Minus 6, and 6 is 3 times 2. So because I've written everything here in terms of prime numbers, it's going to be easy to see what I can pull out. Notice that both expressions here, 3 times 5 times x and 3 times 2, both of them, each they have a 3 as one of their factors. So that's something I can pull out. There's nothing else they have in common. This has a 5 times x, this has a 2. There are no other prime factors. That means there's nothing else I will be able to pull out. So I leave the rest of it there. And this is the factored form. This is just the reverse process of distribution. If I were to use distribution right now to expand this, I'd end up with exactly what I started with, 15x minus 6. Okay. So let's try another one. Factor out the greatest common factor from 3x minus 9. Well, let's write things in terms of their prime factors. So 3 is already prime. The variable x just has to be written as x. But 9 is not prime. 9 can be written as 3 times 3. So now, what do they have in common? Well, they have a 3 in common, so I can pull that out. They don't have anything else in common, so I leave what's left after I pull out that 3. And this is the factored form. And again, you can check by expanding. 3 times x minus 3, when I expand it, I get 3x minus 3 times 3. I get 3x minus 9, which is what I wanted. So let's look at a slightly more complicated one. 3x squared minus 9x. This looks similar, except we've got some more x's. So again, let's write things in terms of their prime factors. 3 times x squared. Well, x squared is really x times x, and it's helpful when we're just learning this to write it out like that. And then 9 times x, well, 9 I don't want because it's not prime. Let's write that as 3 times 3 times x. So what can I pull out? Well, once again, there's a number three I can pull out, but there's also a variable I can pull out, the x. And what does that leave? It leaves this x in the first place and this three in the second place. But be careful, notice there was a minus sign there. I have to continue with that. And now this is the factored form. Again, if you want to check the answer, just use distribution and make sure that when you simplify, you end up with 3x squared minus 9x. 
Here's one with just variables, but we've got two variables now. Doesn't matter. Pro it works out the same way. So one more time, I'm going to write out the expressions in terms of their prime factors. So instead of x cubed, I have x times x times x. And instead of y squared, I have y times y. And then for the second term, instead of x squared, x times x. And instead of y to the fifth, I have y times y times y times y times y. Now I want to pull out what they have in common. Well, each term has two x's. Right? I can pull two of them out, not just one. I can actually pull out two because each of them has two. I could not pull out three. I could get another x out of the first term, but there are no more x's from the second term to pull out with it. So I'm only going to be able to pull out two of them. So I'll have x times x out front. Actually, that's not all, because I can pull out some y's. Look, the, this has a y that can be matched with one from the second term, and a second y that can be matched with one from the second term. So I can also pull out two y's, and that's it. The first term has an x, but there's no x in the second term to match with it. And then the second term has three y's multiplied together. So if I simplify this now, instead of x times x, I can write x squared. Instead of y times y, I can write y squared. And instead of y times y times y, I can write y cubed. And that's the factored form, which again, you can check by distribution. Now this example illustrates something important. There was a lot of writing here because there were large powers and things could get very tedious. For example, if you have x to the 23 and y to the 55, you really don't want to have to write out all of those factors. I don't want to have to write 55 y's multiplied by each other. So this one we're going to try to do using the idea and just trying to visualize what's left behind when we pull out a common factor. So what do I have that I can pull out? Both terms have powers of x. This is 23 x's multiplied together. This is 3 x's multiplied together. So each of them has 3 x's. The first one has more than that, but I can only pull out things that match up one for one with factors from the second term. So I can pull 3 x's out of each, which means I'm going to pull x times x times x, or x cubed out of each. And then what can I pull out from the y's? Well, the first term has two y's, and each of them can be matched with something from the second term, because there are plenty of y's there. So I'll pull out y times y, which is y squared. And then we just have to ask what's left behind. So if I pulled three x's out, and there were 23 of them to begin with, that leaves 20. So I have x to the 20. I pulled out y squared, but that was all of the y's available in the first term. So we're done with the first term. Minus x cubed, I pulled out all three of those factors of x already, so I don't have any x's left in the second term. And out of y to the 55, I pulled out two factors of y, that leaves 53 of them, y to the 53. And here is our factored form of that polynomial.